Okay, thank you, uh, Kiko. You know, also, you know, thank you all of you to attend uh, this uh, uh, wonderful workshop. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, things and applications of uh, some normal two-dimensional learning materials, especially how to think inside this kind of uh, normal 2D materials by chemistry. Just now, Professor Chong gave a very nice talk. So uh, I also give uh, in my group. Uh, we also did some you know synthesis method. How to develop this kind of synthesis method to synthesize some uh, 2D materials. And also we also did some physical method. For example, just like how can we use a scotch tape to make the 2D materials. Uh, the online is just like first uh, we want to synthesize some normal materials, especially uh, how can we use a graphene or other 2D materials as template to synthesize composite. Because you know, I, I'm a chemist and a material scientist. We want to synthesize some composite, not just like a pure materials for physicists, of course, just like a Professor Gan. They like the, you know, the, the very unique structure, very beautiful symmetry structure. But for chemists or material scientists, we want to get some composite, for example, used for the real application. For, uh, for example, the electronic device or the or sensor or even cutting energy, because cutting energy now is very hot. So I will give you some example. You know, uh, we, we we did the uh, graphene-related work about uh, about uh, three, uh, three five years ago. After the, you know three years, uh, in 2000, uh, 2010, we started to add the two D materials. For example, the Dai Chao Jinlai. Here shows some the recent work. How can we use a graphene as a template to synthesize the normal line structure, especially anisotropic structure? As you know, many people use the graphene as a template to to synthesize, for example, the oxide, the spherical nanoparticle, and use for lithium ion battery and supercapacitor applications. So we want to use the graphene as a template to anisotropically to synthesize the nanostructure, especially, for example, the, the uh, normal, normal metal nanostructure, because people already synthesize a lot of normal metal nanostructure, for example, gold, PT, and so on. This is quite, uh, you know, uh, studied the, the research area. Uh, I will give you an example. This one, uh, by using graphene oxide as a template, definitely we can control the size, shape of nanostructures. Originally, by, before this work, we also did some other work related to just like a, you can mix graphene oxide with some you know gold salt and reduce it, and then you can get the spherical nanoparticle. About two years ago, we found this uh, very interesting work. We can mix this kind of the uh, geo and the gold salt and also olaemine, and then. After the you know, 50, uh, at 50, 55 degree, after 16 hours, we can get some uniform, very unique structure, the gold sheet structure. Actually, this gold sheet is very, very thin, about 2.4 2 nanometer. It includes about 16 gold atomic layer. So uh, from TM image, you can see this gold sheet, of course, compared to some of the byproducts, this gold nanoparticle, this contrast is very weak. So it means the thickness of the gold sheet is very, very, very thin. So this gold particle is about 15 to 20 nanometer. So interestingly, if you uh, use a high resolution TM to observe it, you can clearly see this gold, the atoms follow the ABAB stacking. This is uh, one kind of the very novel structure. This we call the HCP, hexagon closed packet gold structure. Compared to the normal gold nanostructure, gold nanoparticle, People already published paper about you know uh, fifty thousand papers on this gold nanostructure. All of them claim this gold structure is a FCC gold nanostructure, although there are some defect. Okay, during your since you get some defect, you can observe the FCC structure. But this is the first time for us to synthesize and in a bit condition the pure HCP structure. For physicists, they can convert the FCC structure to the uh, uh, HCP structure in very high temperature, high pressure. If you coat it very thinly of the gold atom, for example, several layers of gold atom on, on, on substrate, and then in high temperature, high uh, pressure, you can convert the FCC to HCP. But this is the first time for us to use the graphene oxide as template to synthesize, directly synthesize the pure, pure HCP structure. So actually, this HCP structure is stable for several months if you put it in ambient condition. If you put this kind of the gold, uh, gold HCP structure, let it in, in solution for a long time, let it continue to grow, grow, grow until, for example, six nanometer. So HCP will be disappeared, and FCC will 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 show up. So what's the reason we saw that at the beginning? Uh, here there's also some surfactant. 
after the, the thickness of uh, this uh, uh, gold nano sheet, at beginning, the thickness of the gold is very, very thin. So in this case, the internal, the, there's some, uh, the energy of this gold sheet is, uh, includes the surface energy and also the internal of the gold nano structure. So at the beginning, if the gold sheet is very, very thin, so the internal the, uh, uh, energy won't compare to the uh, surface energy, of course, it's very small. So in this case, the surface energy will, be do will dominate the, the, uh, the total system energy. So uh, the HCP gold sheets will be stable. If the gold sheets continue to increase, to growth, and then the thickness continue to increase. So in this case, the internal energy of the HCP will dominate the total energy. Sorry? Yeah, before the question is why is it round, now the question is why is it square? Why is it square? So, okay. So this is a good question. Many people ask this question, okay? So uh, actually, we cannot explain this one in detail, frankly. Because uh, frankly, you know, if for FCC, you will get the hexagon structure, right? But uh, I, I will tell you, but the FCC structure, for HCP structure, this, this here, the direction is 110, not 111. For 111, the, the direction, of course, you will get the FCC, the hexagon structure. But uh, Finally, we, we, sometimes, you know, we, we, in a large scale, we cannot exactly explain. Even we, we, found, uh, we ask somebody to calculate it, and then they cannot get exactly this kind of structure, frankly. So this is a question. Some, some uh, audience always ask this question. So sorry about it. <laughs> you know? So in, in this case, so if the gold sheets continue to grow about six nanometer, and then you can observe the FCC structure. Uh, so I always ask my students, uh, you know, sometimes you cannot work too hard. Because you can see, if you just like uh, want to get this structure, okay, you, you do experiment after two hours, and then you observe, use TM to observe the structure, you can see a lot of the particle. And then in this case, you can see some the square-like structure. So in this case, of course, nothing is new. And uh, if you stop here, you cannot observe, right? And if, the, if you, after, uh, two hours and then after several hours, if you continue to observe it use a TM, you can see some of gold nanoparticles will be fused together. If they continue growth, they will fuse together and then continue to fuse. So in the, in the middle, you can see the, the fuse very, very flat structure. Of course, in the edge, they can, you can still see the gold particle, okay? So after that, if you wait for 16 hours, and then you get this square structure. So sometimes, you know, if you work hard, Maybe it's not, it's not good, especially for students. You need to spend some time to enjoy life, I think, right? <laughs> so uh, after you get this gold sheet structure, what do you want to do, right? Uh, actually, people said, OK, gold nanoparticle has a catalyst the performance, right? And the optical performance. So some audience always ask me, can you get some the catalyst properties or, or or even just like optical properties of this uh, square gold sheets, the normal structure, we said uh, in principle we can, but unfortunately we say in this uh, yield to, to uh, the yield to get this gold sheet, of course, frankly, it's very, very low. It's about uh, 10 to 30 percent. So although we show this structure, we get this uh, lattice structure, but uh, the embark experiment, we still have some gold nanoparticle or the, or the wire structure. Now my group, uh, wants to, how, uh, to purify this gold the square sheets or, or increase the yield of gold square sheets. And then in this case, we can do further application, okay? So after we get this uh, unique uh, uh, SGCP gold sheets, we take it out to put another the gold growth solution. We can get another square like the place. So in this case, you can see the edge will grow very fast in the middle because you, you will grow the, uh, the, the gold in the HCP structure, so in this case, when the growth were thick, so in the, 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 the HCP will be converted to, some HCP will be converted to FCC. So the edge area, because there's a no boundary, they will grow very fast. So you can see in the edge, you, you will get the pure FCC structure. In the, in the uh, middle, you also can observe the HCP structure, right? You cannot uh, eliminate the HCP structure. Because of the nano, uh, nano area, uh, nano world, of course, is uh, very amazing. If you are expert for synthesis of nano structure, you can see if you change a little bit of solvent or change a little bit of, uh, uh, of temperature and also reaction time, you can get a different uh, nano structure. Uh, 
if we remove the add node, and then in this case, we can get the gold nano wires. Especially here, you can see a lot of uh, gold nano wire shows very, very long gold nano wire. And also, the diameter of the gold nano wire is about 1.6 to 1.8 nanometer. This, I think this is a thinness of the gold nano wire that's inside in the world until now. So, this kind of gold nano wire also shows some HCP structure, right? We can also synthesize, for example, the total ball shape of the gold nano structure. So the, here, the, the head area is very big. So this is a pure FCC, but in the tail, the area, you can also observe the HCP FCC alternating structure. Now, my group uh, wants to use, HCC, uh, use the HCP gold to synthesize other materials. So this kind of the 2D nano structure can, can be used for the template for further study or further application. We also want to use a geo graphene oxide as a template to synthesize other semiconducting nano materials, especially the nano sheet structure. Now, the, all this work are uh, ongoing in my group. So, in 2010, we jumped into the other uh, 2D materials, for example, dichalcogenide area. Is, uh, I will show you this, uh, this scheme. So, uh, people can use, for example, sonication method plus some surfactant to make the single layer or multi layer the dichalcogenide uh, nano sheets. But uh, in principle, it's very difficult to get a high yield the single layer, the dichalcogenide nano sheets by using the method. Of course, scotch tape is a good method, but uh, you cannot massively produce large amount of the um, 2D materials. So, uh, I think two years ago, we published this paper. We just like use a lithium intercalation method. We put this kind of the layered material, for example, MS2 or other dichalcogenides as a cathode and lithium foil as anode. In this case, the lithium ion will be integrated into the cathode because the uh, uh, distance between the layered materials is about uh, six to seven extra and lithium ion is very, very small. After the lithium integrated compound takes out and then sonicate, and you can get the large quantity of the single layer, the 2D materials. Actually, just now, the Professor Kam asked that, you know, the, uh, the semiconducting or, or, or conductive of the, of the 2D material. Actually, based on Manish's uh, uh, result, and we also observe this kind of method. Uh, after lithium ion integrated to the MS2, the half MS2 uh, semiconducting, uh, uh, the MS2, uh, the, the product can include the half amount the semiconducting materials and also half amount of the uh, conducting uh, MS2. The structure can maybe change it during the lithium ion uh, uh, integrate. So from the result you can show here, TM image you can show, this of course, this uh, contrast is very weak, and then you can see this uh, sheet structure of MS2, this uh, high resolution TM, and uh, for the F measurement, we, we want to measure the thickness of the uh, MS2 because from a, a TM image, it's very difficult for you to measure it because it's too thin. So after we measure about more than 100 pieces of the MS2, so the height of the uh, single layer MS2 is about 1.0 nanometer, it confirms about 92% MS2 is a single layer. Of course, this kind of method is quite general. It can be used to, to integrate, uh, uh, to get the single layer WS2, TS2, TS2. Uh, compared to w, uh, MS2, MS2, this kind of the single layer, is a, is a, the yield is quite low, about 30%. So this method can also be used to uh, generate a few layer, the bone nitride or MBSE2. But here, it's very difficult to get a high yield of the single layer, uh, the uh, BN and the MBSE2. We also tried the graphite. We, after we use graphite as a cathode, we can get a few layer of the of, of the uh, graphene, but it's very difficult to get a single layer graphene based on this method. Maybe the graphite is very, very hydrophobic. It's very difficult for lithium ion to be integrated into the graphite. Uh, so, uh, uh, because MS2 is one kind of the catalyst, especially that you can use for photocatalyst, you know, chemical catalyst for, for, uh, for catalyst reaction. So we, we use a geo, uh, um, we can use geo to growth and it's chopping large structure, for example, gold sheets. Can we use MS2 as a template to grow other, to, uh, to other the composite, for example, the Nobel uh, metal nano structure? So in this case, we use a G, uh, MS2 as a template. It's easy for us to synthesize, for example, the PT, PT nanoparticle. 
of course, here you can see the PD nanoparticle is not the just like a sheet structure or any kind of the, the, the uh, 2D structure. It's a nearly spherical structure. The diameter of this PD nanoparticle is less than five nanometer. But from diffraction pattern, interestingly, you can find these are two set of diffraction pattern. One belong to the MS2, another one belong to the PD. So it means here uh, the PD can gross on MS2 but not only just like a physics soap on the MS2. Actually, it's gross on MS2 epitaxially. So it means just like this structure is one kind of the uh, materials. So in this case, the electron transfer from the PD to the MS2 will be fast, not just like a physics option, okay? Based on uh, our method, we can also synthesize the PT nanoparticle on the MS2 epitaxially. You can see these two set of the uh, different pattern. Uh, based because this uh, epitaxial growth, you can see we, we test the hydrogen evolution reaction. So it shows the PT MS2 shows better performance compared to the commercialized PT carbon. We in this experiment we fix the PT amount the same. Okay, so because the PT uh, MS2 this uh, epitaxial growth, so you know, to transfer will be fast. Uh, we also gross, uh, for example, silver nanoplate on MS2 nanosheets. In this case, because the uh, uh, lattice mismatch is big, so you can see, although they can form the two kind of set of diffusion pattern, but there's still some, uh, a little bit of angle between these two set of diffusion pattern, about six degree. But in this case, uh, still, we still can gross the uh, silver on, on, on MS2 epitaxially. We can also gross, for example, PT, on other 2D materials, for example, TIS2, and also gold on TIS2, and also PT uh, on TIS2, and gold on TIS2, and then used for, for example, the hydrogen evolution reaction. But in this case, they didn't show better performance compared to the PT carbon. PT carbon is better, okay? So, although we can use, for example, the sonication method to generate the 2D materials, it's very easy for us to control the thickness of the 2D materials, for example, single layer or few layer, but it's very difficult to, for us to control the size of 2D materials. Can we use chemical method to synthesize this kind of the, uh, the, the surface structure with controlled shape, size? Uh, this is quite important for the real application. Just now, Professor Chong also showed very, uh, very promising the method to get the very uniform, the surface nanostructure. structure. So here, we just like mix, the, for example, carbon chloride with the two, ole, uh, two amine, and then you can get this uh, middle, uh, uh, the compound, and then after you put the sulfide, uh, carbon, uh, sulfide powder and at 95 degree, and then you can get a very uniform arch thing, the copper sulfide nano sheets. From this SEM image, you can see the large area, the sheet structure is very uniform. The length is about 450, nanometer and thickness is about 3.2 nanometer. So it means it's uh, composed of the two copper sulfide uh, crystal structure. So this high resolution TM shows this copper sulfide. We also use the other characterization method to confirm this copper sulfide. This method is also very, very uniform. It can be used for synthesis, for example, the nanowire, the sulfide nanowire, zinc, zinc sulfide, uh, Bi2S3 and Sb2S3. All this kind of the nanowire is very, very uniform, uh, very uniform. This, the diameter is less than uh, two nanometer. Uh, so uh, after we get this kind of unique structure or, or normal materials, what we should do? We need to do some proof concept application. Here I will show you some application for the 2D materials. Uh, and uh, for example, this uh, first example, can we use the 2D material for DNA sensing? Because as you know, the graphene oxide or graphene can quench fluorescence, right? In 2009, one paper uh, was published on Angawang Kimi. They use a graphene oxide as a fluorescence quencher and then for DNA detection. So because of, in my group, we have a lot of the 2D materials. Can we use other these 2D materials, materials as a fluorescence quencher to, to, uh, for uh, DNA sensing application? So actually, the concept is similar to the graphene oxide. But we, we just uh, want to prove if the other 2D materials has a similar the properties for sensing application. So the experiment design is just like here. We have the uh, single layer or even the sum of the few layer, the MS2 solution. Then after we modify the proper single, single strain proper DNA with the, the uh, 
current form. So in this case, if you mix uh, MS2 with the proper DNA, due to the very strong interaction between single uh, strain DNA and, uh, and the MS2, so in this case, the distance between current form and MS2 is very weak, uh, very, very, very small. So uh, for instance, we'll be quenched. Uh, and if we put the target DNA into the solution, if the target DNA and the proper DNA is com uh, can hybrid, okay, it's a complementary DNA. So in this in this case, they will form the double strain DNA, and the interaction between the double strain DNA and the MS2 is very weak. So in this case, the double strain DNA distance between uh, the distance between double strain DNA and the MS2 is very big. So the fluorescence will show up. So based on this ph uh, phenomena, we can use it for the uh, DNA sensor. So you can see here, we, we, we can design the proper DNA. It shows here, this uh, target DNA is here, right? They, they have some, the, the uh, FAM, this uh, chrome form here. So in this case, you, you can see, when we added the, uh, the target DNA with different concentration, if the concentration increase, the fluorescence increase. Based on this uh, technique, it's very easy for us to detect the, 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 the target DNA at, at 500 pico more. Yeah, importantly, if we design this kind of the problem, problem, okay, the optimal problem. So in this case, we can use it for sensing the adenosine. So if we added the uh, co uh, high concentration adenosine, you can see the fluorescence will be increased. So of course, based on uh, our detection, five micromoles of adenosine can be detected. Uh, this detection limit definitely is not low, but for sensing, for chemical or biological sensing, detection limit is very important, or, and also the selectivity is very important. So based on this uh, design, we can use it to sense the adenoids and cannot use it for sensing other kind of the uh, structure, for example, UCG or even black. You, you can see they, they have black, they have the same the, the fluorescence intensity compared to the UGC. So this method can be selectively used to detect the adenoids. After we get the 2D materials, especially MS2, we can use it for sensing application. So it's very easy for us to fabricate the device on the PET. So for example, we spin coating geofilm on the PET, and then you, the, you can use some non-metal objects to scratch the surface. For example, you know, wooden or bamboo to scratch the surface to get the gap. Okay, after you reduce it, you, you reduce the geo pattern to RGO. So because this is a gap, so this uh, RGO can be used for electron. show. Okay, so thickness here for the geo is about the 10 nanometer. So this is very, very uh, simple method for us to generate the uh, uh, graphene electrode. It's not necessary for us to use photolithography or other complicated method to generate it. So after that, we can spin coating the MS2 film. MS2 will be deposited in a, in a channel, right? Uh, although they were covered on the neutral, but it doesn't affect the, the electrical properties. So, and then you can deposit the silver pad. Silver pad will be linked to the wire. And, and then here, you, you can also deposit some, for example, the nova metal the nanoparticles, for example, PT, to enhance the sensitivity. So here, it shows actually the six uh, uh, the device uh, on the PET surface. So by using this kind of the device, we can easily to sense the, the uh, toxic gas, for example, NO2 at 0.5 uh, ppm level. Actually, we can even we can sense it to the lower level uh, uh, if you decrease the concentration of the uh, NO2. So we can use a chemical method or even just like the solidification method to generate the single layer MS2. But, uh, you know, uh, ab about one year ago, uh, Dr. Li Hai, uh, he's sitting here, uh, he used a scotch tape method to generate this kind of the, uh, single layer to fill layer MS2. So by using scotch tape method from the optical image, you can see actually there's some difference, right? The, con the, the contrast is different, but uh, you cannot distinguish it immediately this one layer, two layers, three layers, or four layers. By AFM, it's easy and a very accurate method for you to measure the thickness. For example, this 0.8 nanometer is about one layer, 1.5 nanometer about two layers, and three layers, four layers. After we get this uh, layered materials, we, we can use it, for example, to fabricate the device, FET device, this two layer MS2, this untap, the, the semiconducting materials, and the use for sensing application. For example, the gas sensing to detect the uh, uh, NO. So it's very easy for us to detect the 0.8 ppm NO, okay? 
So recently, we published one paper in SC Solano. I, I think Dr. Lee used more than one year to use his eye to distinguish the, the layered lamp, uh, layered lamp, layered uh, uh, MS2 or other 2D materials. Actually, if you use the FM to measure the thickness of the of the 2D material, of course you can get the thickness, uh, layer number of the 2D material. And also you can use Raman to detect the layer number, but if the layer number go about six or seven layers, it's very difficult for you to use Raman to measure it. So he developed a method, he, he can use a, you know, optical method to distinguish the layer number of the 2D materials. I think it's a faster method to distinguish it, and then for physics it's very useful for them to fabricate the the 2D uh, materials based device. Actually, the optical uh, microscopy has three kinds of channel. One is blue, one is red, and one is gray, gray channel. So based on the different uh, contrast in different channel, he summarized all, all, all this kind of data and then use a standard data to distinguish it from one layer to until the 15th layer of the MS2. Now he can use his eye to observe it. It's very easy, okay? If you uh, have a any interest in this method, you can borrow his eye to, 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 to observe it and then for you, okay? So, and also, it's very easy for him to detect, for example, you know, for one layer to 14 layer WSC2. You, you can see actually from here, it's very difficult to distinguish. If I, I cannot distinguish, but he can, he can distinguish, okay? So, and also for, you know, even uh, one layer to 15 layer, the graphene sheets on the, uh, 90 nanometer silicon oxide, the silicon is very easy to distinguish. It. So, by by using this uh, kind of method, it's very uh, very accurate and also important thing. You save time after you make the uh, use the scotch tape, make the 2D materials, and then you can immediately use for device application. No need for you to use, for example, the AFM or Raman to detect it. And sometimes for MS2, you know, if you use Raman or even you know, uh, uh, use Raman to, to detect for a long time. Sometimes you will destroy this MS2 on the surface. Uh, we can, uh, uh, this, uh, this, for example, because uh, MS2 is very, very sensitive to the light, right? Is this one kind of the, uh, after the light irradiate on the MS2, you can get the uh, current, current, just like the photo current. Uh, this morning, uh, the Andrew Kiss already showed some promising result about the photo uh, current on MS2. So here, uh, this, uh, this paper, uh, we just, uh, you know, it's very easy for us to fabricate, for example, 0.8 nanometer, this one layer MS2, and then use a photolithography to fabricate this device. And also we studied the uh, single layer MS2 photo uh, transistor properties. We studied the uh, excitation wavelengths and also the optical power, how this kind of the, uh, parameter affected the photo current. And also we studied, uh, for example, the stability of this kind of the, uh, uh, device. Uh, because at that time, you know, our device uh, quality, frankly, is, uh, is, is quite low. And then, you know, this co we want to just uh, publish this concept. So, uh, so we, we, we did very, you know, frankly, this, uh, this work is quite, uh, quite rough. Uh, maybe I spent some time uh, uh, to show you some results about the 3D graphene, although this workshop is based on beyond graphene. But I think the you know, 2D graphene, of course, is very useful, but it's very difficult for you to massively produce or just like use for real uh, big uh, you know, application. And uh, the cost is, because the cost is quite, quite, quite high. So uh, about two years ago, we developed one kind of method to generate a 3D graphene based on the nickel form as a template. So it's very easy uh, for us to generate 3D graphene after we put the uh, nickel foam in the CVD chamber. But here we use ethanol, okay, as a as a uh, gas, as, as 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 carbon gas because ethanol is quite safe uh, compared to the methane. So in this case, after the graphene grows on the nickel foam, you can see the color changes. If we remove this nickel foam by acid, we get a 3D graphene because this is just like a poor structure of the of the graphene network. So in this case, you can see that the volume is quite big, but the weight is about 100 milligrams. So this uh, is a very light structure. So based on the characterization, we can see this uh, 3D graphene, the quality is very, very high. The quality, this uh, uh, lattice structure shows the graphene, the, uh, the just like, uh, you know, the crystal structure, and also the D-band uh, cannot be seen very clearly. So the quality of graphene is very good. So based on this uh, uh, result, we coded 
uh, uh, for example, MS2 on the surface of graphene, of 3D graphene, and uh, we can use for some application. But uh, here, because we, we collaborated with the Professor Jin Kong at MIT, and uh, he, his, uh, after he get this uh, data, you know, his uh, postdoc left, uh, his gr uh, her group. So in this case, we, we cannot just uh, optimize the experimentation. But uh, anyway, we can count the amount as two on the surface of 3D graphene and get the, this composite structure. So uh, we have the big, some big MS2 is here, and also we have some uh, small MS2 here. So I said this quality of MS2 coating is not uh, very high. But we can use it for some proof of concept, uh, you know, you know the, the uh, application. By Raman, we can detect the MS2, and also well, after we use it for, for this ion battery application, it shows quite a, uh, quite good the uh, application, okay, of, uh, of the uh, MS2 coated 3D graphene. And also, you know, the stability is quite good after, you know, cycle, for example, 50 uh, times. Uh, because we are chemists, we want to use chemical method to synthesize MS2. One of my students use a chemical method to coat the few layer MS2 on the surface of nickel, uh, of titanium oxide nanobell. This titanium oxide nanobell of coating MS2, you can see the structure change here. So we can characterize this kind of MS2, okay, on the surface. Uh, I want to repeat this data. So this one can be used for, for example, this uh, uh, hydrogen production, used for hydrogen production. So you can see the 50% of uh, uh, MS2 coated on titanium oxide shows a better performance compared to the uh, titanium oxide or even MS2. And also this structure can be used for uh, the degrade the uh, rhodamine B or even other, for example, you know, the organic, uh, organic, organic uh, chemicals. So this kind of structure can be used for water cleaning to remove some, some you know, the, the organic chemicals. So it shows here, this 50% of the uh, MS2 coated on titanium oxide shows a better performance compared to the titanium oxide and, uh, and also MS2. Of course, this is a proof concept. If you want to use it for the real application, we need to do more work on this one. So finally, uh, maybe I will show you some recent work because the morph is quite hot. So can we use uh, 3D graphene f uh, mixed with the morph to do some application? Because 3D graphene is very good uh, in a code, right? Conductivity is very good, okay? So in this case, we just uh, coded, you know, the, the morph on, uh, on the 3D graphene and anneal it in the air first, uh, argon first, and then you get some pore structure. But finally, if you anneal in the air, you burn out all the organic ligand and then get the porous, the metal oxide non structure. So uh, this kind of the uh, structure is very flexible. You can bend it, you can, you can push it, and it still survive. And this characterization, we, we just uh, coated the ZIF8 morph on the 3D graphene. You can see morph structure, this uh, polyhexagon structure. After you anneal under the air, you get some pore structure, right? But, but not completely uh, the pores. So if you anneal and then in the air, and then you burn out all the organic chemicals, you get the pore structure. This uh, porous uh, structure, of course, they have some advantage compared to the normal uh, zinc oxide the nanoparticle because the surface area is very big. And also we can use it to synthesize, for example, iron oxide, the, uh, the structure coated on morph. You can see this, uh, this kind of structure, this pore structure. So this, this structure, for example, the zinc oxide, the pore structure coated on 3D graphene shows better performance for the degraded the methylene blue. Can, this one can be used, for example, the clean water, uh, okay? So here, the, the zinc oxide coated on 3D graphene shows better performance compared to zinc oxide, pure zinc oxide and 3D graphene. And then importantly, this kind of structure can be used for, uh, for many times. After you use it, you can rinse it out and then use it again. So for the iron oxide coated 3D graphene, you, we can use it for, for example, lithium and battery application. So compared to the iron oxide, the iron oxide coated on 3D graphene shows better performance, okay? Maybe a few slides about the all, all carbon devices, especially for all graphene uh, devices. Uh, because if you use a metal as a inner chart, definitely there's some problem, for example, the high cost, high cost, right? And also if you want to use CVD method to grow the CNT or graphene based on the metal inner chart due to the high temperature in CVD, for example, 800 degree or even 1000 degree, so maybe the some of the inner chart will be destroyed. So we develop one kind of method uh, 
a very simple method to make the all RGO memory device, also the, the in a chart are uh, made by RGO. So we spin coding the geo on the surface of silicon oxide, and then you just uh, use a long metal objects, for example, wooden or bamboo to scratch, just like, uh, just like I mentioned before, and then get the gap, right? And then if you reduce it, it is a highly reduced RGO for conductive, uh, the, to make the conductive RGO, so you get an electrode. And then you, you use PMMA to detach it and transfer to other, any kind of subject. You get the, this kind of RGO electrode. And then you spin coding the geo again, to reduce it, but this is not a highly reduced geo, this slightly reduced geo, this uh, just like, if uh, highly reduced geo, it will be conducting, right? You cannot use for memory device. So, uh, and then in this, after you get this structure, you put another kind of the highly reduced geo in this direction, okay? You get the ORGO memory device. So this is a prototype of the structure, and then after you uh, do the memory device test, you can see this is just the right ones read many times, the, the, uh, the memory device. And maybe this uh, last example, uh, in this one, this uh, uh, memory device, this is uh, a flat on flat surface. Can we use a fiber to make the memory device? So this is uh, a collaborator with uh, uh, Lian Shizhen in NTU. So in his lab, he can make the, you know, the multiple fiber because he, he can grow the multiple array, uh, uh, multiple CNT array, and then use, uh, you know, the, his method to make the fiber, okay, to, uh, to stretch. So how to say, to pull the, this kind of the, uh, uh, multiple CNT and then get the fiber. After we get the fiber, we code the geo, okay? And then the, we fabricate the device here. This one kind of the geo coated the multiple fiber. This is another one. You make the cross uh, link. You, if, the, if they cannot uh, collect it very well, so the, then you can drop one, drop a little of the geo and then code it here. And if we, you put, uh, link this one and this one to the wire and then you get the, uh, this kind of the multiple uh, fiber, you know, uh, or, or carbon the, uh, based on the uh, memory device. So, so you can see this uh, uh, multiple CNT here, after, you know, you get the fiber, this uh, very dense the uh, multiple CNT fiber, it shows here. After you call the geo, you the XPS, you detect the geo here, this is a prototype of the, this device. You have the, you know, the, the one, two, three, one, two, three, you know, totally six fiber, and then you make the line uh, cross. Uh, the for device application. So we, we can also use uh, for, for this kind of method to generate a non volatile memory device, okay? So I think I should stop here because of time limit. So uh, based on my talk, we, we demonstrate some uh, novel 2D materials based on, for example, the graphene and the 2D materials. Uh, after that, we use this kind of materials for some applications, especially electronic application, energy application, and sensing application. Uh, and I need to thank uh, my student uh, and also, you know, funding and also the collaborators. And uh, thank you for your attention.